Poke Owl, of course, is best known to our audience as Dud Wash in The Andy Griffith Show. But he had a long career that started professionally in New York and then continued in Hollywood. These are just a few clips from the more than 200 TV shows and films that he appeared in over the course of his career. Now, Hoke would go on to play a lot of gas station attendants, which became a running joke in the Howell household. In fact, I believe his first professional role in Hollywood in 1961 was a gas station attendant in The Hustler, starring Paul Newman and Jackie Gleason. He had a few lines of dialogue, but you never really see his face, and he didn't even get screen credit for the role. But things did improve, and Dennis the Menace in 1962, he played a soda jerk, uh, which was a nice comedic role for him. Ah, oh, what did it be, young lady? What's a small glass of water to? A small glass of water? Yeah. Uh, with everything on it? What's a small glass of water, please? A small glass of water coming up. And then, of course, in 1963, he did two episodes as Dud Wash in The Andy Griffith Show. Now, he did the episode that introduced the Darling family, where he shows up at the end to reunite with Charlene Darling. There's Dud. <laughs> and, of course, Mountain Wedding, which is one of the more popular episodes in the entire series. Well, you let him just try. Boy, I'll show him a couple of things I learned in the Army in guerrilla warfare. First, you take your hair and yank his right around, and then you take your hand and yank it. <laughs> An episode that also introduced Ernest T. Bass. Stop that waiting! In 1964, he did the Jack Benny Show. In this sketch, Jack Benny is playing Paul Revere, and his wife is played by Lucille Ball. British are coming. There was one light in the church tower. That means they're coming by land. You've got to warn the people. And uh, she won't let him out for the night, and Hoke shows up to tell him it's time to ride. I'm not going to stand here arguing with you. I'm going. Oh, yeah? Yes. And I'm going to go right now, too. <laughs> In 1964, he showed up in McHale's Navy in a scene with Tim Conway, and he's playing a Frenchman with some sort of ridiculous looking mustache and a French accent to match. Hey, hey, the money, the payroll, where is it? Money, monsieur? Oh, has any of you seen this officer's money? No, no, no. no we have seen nothing, monsieur, not even a suit. In 1964, he shows up in Bob Hope Chrysler Theater, which is one of the last major anthology TV series, uh, this one with Roddy McDowell. And of course, he's playing a gas station attendant. Uh, just just don't, don't shoot, fella, because uh, I'm, I'm a family man. <laughs> hey, what's back here? But all I wanted was some gas. It looks like Roddy was ready for the pandemic. In this episode of The Munsters from 1965, the Munsters' pet dragon Spot that normally lived under the stairs, uh, Spot gets out and gets lost in the sewer system, and Herman goes looking for Spot and runs into some sewer workers, but uh, of course they get freaked out, and uh, Hoke shows up as a news reporter. The people of this city are frightened, and they're demanding some kind of official action. Next, we have Bonanza in 1966 with Michael Landon and Lorne Green. I hear tell you gotta stomp them grapes to get the juice. Old Hoss has sure got the feet for stomping. I'm gonna do a little stomping in your direction if you don't shut up. Now, when he wasn't antagonizing the Cartwrights, you might find him playing a police officer, like in this 1967 episode of Green Acres with Eddie Albert and Ava Gabor. Uh, may I see your license, please? Uh, yes, sir. I'm a little embarrassed about this. Oh, well, so am I. <laughs> Next, we have Lost in Space from 1968. During our Mayberry Man crowdfunding campaign, which is still active, by the way, on Indiegogo, we offered a digital copy of our father's shooting script from this episode. This was one of Hoke's more over-the-top performances, in my opinion. On your feet, Corporal Red Alert! <laughs> Then in 1968, Hoke landed his first television series as a regular in Here Come the Brides, which was a TV series starring teen heartthrob of the day, Bobby Sherman, along with David Soule, who would later become Hutch in Starsky and Hutch, 
Brides, as the cast and crew called it, ran for two seasons starting in 68, and it was a huge break for Hoke because being an actor can be feast or famine, and so every actor's dream is to be a series regular. It's good money and a steady paycheck doing what you love to do week after week. Uh, what's wrong? We, you, I just came in to get a drink, man, to get the chill out of me balls. Well, of all the dumb things. I never heard of anything so dumb in all my life. Clancy, you are really dumb. That takes us into the 70s with the Brady Bunch. Where y'all folks headed for? Grand Canyon. Boy, that place sure gets crowded this time of year. Yeah. Even the squirrels need reservations. <laughs> in this classic episode where they're on their way to see the Grand Canyon, and there he is playing a gas station attendant, but Hope gives them directions to a ghost town where they uh, get into a little bit of trouble. All right, you kids, now don't let a ghost get you. <laughs> In 1971, Hoke plays a racehorse in Bewitched. Uh, that's, of course, after Samantha, Elizabeth Montgomery, turns the horse into a human so she can ask him why he's losing so many races. How did you do that? I'm a witch. Oh, sure, and I'm Pegasus. <laughs> and I'm sorry, did you notice his makeup? It looked like they sort of did a kind of a little blackface thing with the makeup to match the color of the horse. This will be my last race. I'm not as dumb as I look. Well, okay, moving on. <laughs> then there's Columbo in 1971. How did you know that, Ben? Oh, come on, Sergeant. Doc Webster told us. All right, so there was a bruise. You know, a lot of people say that they hear Hoke's voice from the television before they see him on screen, and they know instantly that it's Hoke Howell. And in this episode, if you blink, you do miss him, but you hear that voice. In 1972, there was a TV movie starring Dennis Weaver called Rolling Man. Uh, and then in 73, Slaughter's Big Ripoff, starring Jim Brown and Ed McMahon. This scene didn't turn out too well for Hoke's character. In fact, that image of him being choked out by Jim Brown even became the focal point for the artwork inside the record album for the movie's soundtrack. Wait, wait a minute, wait. Then there's Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. It was a TV series based on a film by the same title, and this was 1973. The series starred Robert Urich and Ann Archer, among others, and it was actually canceled in the first season before Hoax episode even aired. In fact, it wasn't even being finished edited. But somehow, uh, my father got his hands on a copy of the rough cut on VHS tape. So this clip, uh, while technically the quality is lacking a little bit, but it is one of my favorite performances by my father. Take a look. I think uh, let's... Yeah, <laughs> Come on, let's talk about this, huh? Now listen, you're entitled to your opinion. Look, I didn't call you a thief. A man walks into a big city office wearing a cowboy suit and a western hat. I got nothing against your clothes. Well, what is it, then? Is, is it my down-home accent? Of course not. <laughs> Don't you please stop accusing me. Listen, let's just lay it right out on the line. I mean, you're a smart man, big city lawyer, and you cannot see how anybody could sell prime Kansas City corn-fed beef at my prices. As a matter of fact... Unless uh... he was some kind of a crook, a con man, or Lord help us all leave it a cattle rustler. <laughs> I, I'm old, I'm old, I've been honest with you. Now, I want you to be honest with me. Isn't that what you're thinking? Yes, yes, I did think that. All right, then there's no use in us wasting each other's time any further. You have a nice day, huh? How do you sell prime beef at those prices? Oh, by eliminating the middleman. What middleman? Well, the shipper, the packer, the wholesaler, and the supermarket. Now, that ain't too hard to understand, is it? Yeah, but where, you, where do you get the, uh, the meat, the cows? I'm a cattleman. Yeah, how do you get them here? Well, I hit them up, move them out. Don't you ever go to the movie? <laughs> well, I guess it sounds logical. I mean, what you're, <laughs> what you're saying is that you've managed to uh, cut your overhead, huh? No, I ain't what I'm saying at all. What I'm trying to tell you is that I am being squeezed. <laughs> now, sit down there. I want to show you something. You got another minute? Sure. Come on. You've got to look at this. Yeah, take a look at that. Is that your family? Left to right there, that's, that's Billy Ralph, Gene Roy, that's my wife, Lainey, Jojo, old Big Carl, <laughs> and Tad Poe and J.D., that's the twins, and, and that little fella on the crutches there. <laughs> that's DeWitt. 
uh, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm real proud of them. I tell you, you folks here in Los Angeles County may not realize it, but times are hard. I'm just trying to feed my young'uns the best way I know how. Maybe I owe you an apology. <laughs> no, sir, you don't owe me a thing. No, 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 I want you to understand. You see, I feel that as a consumer, we have responsibility. You bet. Now, I know that nobody gets anything for nothing. Right again. Now, as an attorney, I felt that I had to ask you these questions. Oh, shoot, I respect you for that. Good, just so you understand. Now, let's talk prices. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yes, sir. Now, here's my price list. I want you to take... I just wish that episode would have aired because I think it would have led to more comedic opportunities for him. By the way, he did end up being a cattle rustler in that episode. Now, I remember the mid-70s being pretty lean in the Howell household. Things slowed down for him a bit with just a handful of bit parts on various TV series. Uh, there was Kung Fu in 1975, the Blue Knight in 76. I am not drunk. Well, I'm glad to hear that. No, you don't believe me. I can prove it to you. I tell you, you, you give, give me a test. Give okay. me a test. Mickey Mouse, a dog or a cat? Mickey Mouse, a dog or a cat. Let me think. Uh, uh, it would have to be 190B, you and I got the corner of 7th and Alvarado. Well, I don't make any, any sense, does it? I mean, it's like, it's like Corky Pig, right. Tweety Bird, right. Mickey Mouse. He's, he's, a, he's a mouse. Right. He's a mouse, doesn't he? I got it. But then in 77, uh, he was in two episodes of the first season of Chips with Eric Estrada and Larry Wilcox, John and Ponch. Um, the first appearance was actually the pilot episode where he plays a Texas tycoon trying to avoid speeding tickets by warding off radar. Then he shows up later in the same season as a truck driver whose glue truck overturned on the freeway. Also in 1977 was Kingdom of the Spiders, a movie starring William Shatner about a town being taken over by spiders. And yes, he does play a gas station attendant. Oh, say, listen, can I help you with something, Mary? Right? No, you just go on and do what you're doing. I'm fine. Oh, I appreciate that. God almighty! Now that was a pretty authentic reaction right there. I heard that exact exclamation from Hoke many times throughout my life. And I remember my father saying that that spider seemed pretty mad by the time they finished filming that scene. And the old earth reeled and it rocked and rolled and it because he was angry. And still in 1977, we have Ron Howard's directorial debut, Grand Theft Auto. Hope was cast as the preacher. This was a fun Roger Corman picture with uh, some great stories behind it too. Uh, they talk about it in the book, The Boys, Ron and Clint Howard's book. And uh, we also have a video on our YouTube channel with Clint Howard talking about uh, the making of this film. Amen. And it's also my first time on the big screen. My dad took me to the set on the days they filmed the big demolition derby sequence, and I made it into the background as an extra a couple of times. And on a side note, I just read that they are about to demolish the Saugus Speedway in Santa Clarita, California, where they filmed that demolition derby to make way for some new developments. Definitely the end of an era. Now in 1979, we have the Dukes of Hazard, And if you knew my dad, the last thing he would ever want is to be put in a casket. That's literally the reason he gave for wanting to be cremated when he passed away. But the Duke boys didn't seem to care. Then now we're into the 80s and 1980 with Humanoids from the Deep. Not a bad movie, pretty creepy, but I thought the best thing was how well they cast my father's son in the film. Definitely a resemblance. Hoke continued to show up regularly on TV shows throughout the 80s. He did a couple of Happy Days episodes with Ron Howard, of course, uh, The Fall Guy with Lee Majors, Remington Steele with Pierce Brosnan, and there was an episode of Webster with Emmanuel Lewis where he's playing a clown. And I'm, I'm sure he didn't like being put into that trunk any more than he did the casket. What are you spraying? 
And then in 1990, he appeared in Another 48 Hours, starring Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte. It was a pretty cool part because the first face you see on screen is an extreme close-up of Hoke. And you can imagine being in a movie theater, you know, a giant screen, and it's just like, bam, right there in your face. So uh, that was fun for him, uh, but it doesn't end well for him. I, I don't think he even survived the opening credits. Oh, God, oh, no! Stay where you are, boys. We're just stopping for water. And then in 1992, he appears in Ron Howard's Far and Away, uh, starring Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. A lot of good stories behind that film as well. The Howard family was all involved, and uh, a pretty good flick, I think. And then in 93, he shows up in Geronimo, starring a young Matt Damon. And this was a pretty good scene, too. Now, he continued to make uh, additional films late in his career. He passed away in 1997, um, but there's a lot of credits. You can check them out on IMDb, but we just thought it'd be fun to show you a few clips and uh, just to take a trip down memory lane. This is reality, so you just move on. No sale here, Mr. Security. Judgment Day. <laughs> <laughs> 